I will come to your house. I will go to your refrigerator, fridge, fridge, your refrigerator. I will take your butter out of your fridge. I will eat the butter in front of you and your family's eyes. And I, I force you to watch me while I eat all your butter. You will beg and cry and say, no, don't eat all our butter we need for Christmas. I will say, aha, not my problem. I take the empty bottle, I will throw it on the stairway. I will go home. T T T B T L. Guess what day it is? Guess what day it is? It's Friday, Friday. Gonna get down on Friday. Everybody's looking forward to the weekend. For twenty dollars, I can tell you a lot of things. For thirty, I can tell you more. And for fifty, I can tell you everything. It's kind of weird. I feel like I'm being interrogated, but by someone who doesn't really want to know anything important. For the sake of customer service, try to chill out, my mom. Oh my God, man! We are seeing some shit we ain't never seen before. Well, all right. Hello, good morning, and welcome everyone to a Friday edition of TBTL, the show that just might be too beautiful to live. As Florida's machine says, the dog days are over. My name is Luke Burbank. I am your host. It's an audiophile's nightmare. Coming to you from the Madrona Hill studio, perched high above the mighty Columbia on this Friday. Hmm. It's another warm one mm, mm, mm. i'm flying in hot for that hottie but we are not going to let that stop us from bringing you episode 4288 in a collector series let the fun begin the final day of the tbtl travel guide curing lonely planetness that's Motors right cannot travel through the vacuum of space today we make a brief stop in iceland you're as cold as ice and I just want to—I want to—I want to level set. I want to get out in front of some things. I want to say, if you're listening in Iceland right now, you may want to skip this episode of the show. If you are a fan of Iceland, if you are—if you—if you—if you don't want to hear anyone maybe besmirching this sleet-filled rock of a country, this may not be the episode for you. But if you love that stuff, this might very much be the episode of TBTL for you. Speaking of international travel, check this guy out. He's the longest running Cobro of the show, maybe best known for his depictions of the tall ships. He is about to go to Croatia and- um, He finally got all his worries. We're gonna hear how he's doing with all of that a little later in the show. First, let's introduce him. He's Andrew Walsh. He's joining me right now. Good morning, my friend. I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Did you swap a drop between our sound check and the actual intro that you just did? Not that I remember. The Star Trek one, that's how you edited it? Yeah. Okay, I'm going out of my mind. I, I've done this now two days in a row. My apologies. I thought I thought I heard you doing something interesting during sound check. You said, I want to play this drop, and it was a longer version of that yes. Star Trek drop. It actually hear, begins... You want to hear the unedited version? Yeah, it begins with that's illogical okay. ensign, right? Because Yeah, because here's the thing. Um, I don't have very many drops about, like, travel, so I right. was searching for travel in my system, and I found this drop. It's obviously uh, Leonard Nimoy. I think it's pronounced Leonard Teva. Yes, um, Mr. Have you Spock. heard people say it's Nimoy? Oh, maybe. Maybe you've told me that. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't clutter my head with it's, such nonsense. It's good. It's Spock. Uh -huh. And... So I just wanted the part where he's saying travel. He's saying the word travel. So I cut it down to be this. Motors cannot travel through the vacuum of space. But of course, the full uh, unedited version, I think it's actually got like, it's even got maybe, um, who's uh, not Scotty, who was who, Chekhov maybe? Okay, in it? sure, yeah. So let's see. Here's the full version. I just thought this was going to muddy the, the waters a little bit. Here's the full version. Motors cannot Whoops. travel through the vacuum of space. Sorry, that's nope. not what that is. I'm trying to revert to the original. Here we go. Now. That is illogical, Ensign. Motors cannot travel through the vacuum of space. 
I was making a little joke, sir. Extremely little, Benson. <laughs> wow. Oh, cold. Talk about cold. Dude, Ooh, serious. Yeah, that's, you got roasted. That's as cold as Greenland. Um, it sure is. It's, Iceland, but okay. Um, no, isn't Greenland the cold one and Iceland isn't oh. as cold? I thought that was always oh. like one of those misnomers that everybody likes oh, to talk about. It was like pretty Greenland. cold when I was there. Um, but uh, I was... Okay, okay um, I'll what just did you think finish happened? this up. I, I, thought, I thought you were doing something actually... Ironically or aptly illogical, when you played that during soundcheck, I'm like, oh, I'll bet you you grabbed that because you were looking for things that had travel in it, and that popped yes. up. But yes. then you're like, I don't want to play the whole thing. I'm going to make an edit, and I thought it was curious because I thought you made the edit so that you were just taking the beginning of it, not the <laughs> part that said travel. I thought that is you illogical. Ensign. I thought you just kept the part that said that is illogical, Ensign. I'm like, what a weird, <laughs> what a weird decision there. But I'll just let it roll. And then I thought I heard something different in the actual intro of the show. But I'm again. I mean, this just goes you're back. To, I'm, lo I'm losing you my mind. What? I'm Andrew, half. I'm half a you've foot got out the short door. Short timer. That's right. Thing. Drum That's because you're right. going to be leaving for your big trip. I got senioritis. Um, I, I do want to hear about that. First, though, I need to just take a moment to warn everyone because, of course, oh, you know what? I forgot to write an Iceland song. By that, <laughs> you're, you're now saying that you're writing it. I love I how, know, right? Oh, I forgot to p compose my own song about. Oh, no. You know what? I'm sorry. Forgive me here. I am going to uh, try to on the fly see if I can sign in to this program. Ooh, you're going to actually create it. Please yeah. try and. Yeah. I'm trying to, but the problem is I'm logged in on my other computer in the house. Oh, uh, um, into that, into that thing here. I have a music. Can you do this? Here. Can you log into Suno or something like it? And can you ask it to please write a song in the style of the Icelandic airport? A song. <laughs> See what it comes up with. In the style. The Hold kind on. of song you might hear if you're at the airport in Iceland. I am using something called. Udio, I believe. Okay. It says it's Udios cannot travel through the vacuum of space, <laughs> Andrew. That is illogical. U U Udio, I feel like we have done this before. It says it needs me to sign up, but I feel like I've already signed I feel like I've already done this before. And this is gonna be a real problem here, Luke, me trying to create this, I believe, on the fly. Oh, good. I'm glad you got two factor authentication so that I can yes. make a bullshit song. You don't want on someone Udioing something no. under someone else's oh, name. Gee, thank you so much. Create your profile, dreamy woodblock fifty seven. I'm I'm in over my head here, Luke. It's it's. Okay. I've used Everyone this service imagine. before. Yeah. Everybody, just imagine. You know what? Fine. We're just gonna, we're just gonna use okay. the French music from yesterday. Okay, there we go. Imagine that there's a French person visiting Iceland, and when you go into the airport, they're singing this for some reason. Des hommes sont so here is what happened. And, I, you know, for instance, our friend, a television's Chris Hayes, I believe took a, what looked like an absolutely lovely trip to Iceland with his family recently. And I get the sense that if you go to the right places, and I know Iceland's actually a very popular destination. I'm sure we have lots of listeners who've had wonderful times there, okay? What happened for us was I was, again, trying to just get the cheapest tickets home that I could find. And because I was booking it through the Alaska Airlines thing, but I was also using miles and maybe a little bit of money, but trying to kind of find the most reasonable way to get from Paris uh, to Portland, somehow we ended up on Iceland Air. And my thought was, I think of Iceland as being sort of Scandinavian, which I think is probably my first mistake. Hmm. It's not really Scandinavian. I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe it's technically. But, like, I thought, mm, I don't know. Things from Scandinavia, in my experience, are usually, like, a little nicer than things from America. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like, the design. You know, we well, talk about Scandinavian. the style and design, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's something I, I tend to go towards, the kind of blonde blonde wood and a little bit, like, you know, more uncluttered, the sort of ikea mm -hmm. of things. I know that's Sweden. But I was literally, like, my mouse was hovering over, are we going to fly all the way home on Aer Lingus, or are we going to fly all... And this is before I'd even been on an Aer Lingus flight. What I had learned... There was that's also a pretty bargain basement kind of airline, but I I just didn't know I did I didn't I hadn't been on Iceland Air I, that I remembered, and I didn't know much about it. I didn't know much about Aer Lingus. There was like one flight we could have taken on one of them, one on the other. Somehow I defaulted to I bet you that Iceland Air is going to be kind of like sleek and Scandinavian. They might have like nice planes and like even though we're not going to be in first class, maybe the I don't know. I just 
I was putting a lot of hope in what I consider to be the Scandinavian features of the nation of Iceland. Mm -hmm. And what I learned is it's maybe more Soviet. <laughs> we, first of all, it was like, tr I, I had paid extra money for us to be like kind of at the front of coach. So like the, you know, the, the very front row of coach, which usually means you have a little more leg room, just kind of like the bulkhead or something. Mm -hmm. I had paid like a, fairly significant upgrade fee because I thought, well, you know, this is a really long flight. So first the flight was from Paris to Reykjavik. That's like three and a half hours. And then from Reykjavik to Portland, that's like eight hours. And I was like, for this eight hour flight, we're really going to want to be able to like stretch our legs and stuff and try to be, even though we're going to be in coach, it would be nice if we weren't like in the middle of a big wide row. Cause these international flights, I mean, you and I have flown to Australia. There's sometimes that middle row yeah. where you're not a window, you're not an aisle. It's a nightmare. So I was like, let's, I'm going to splash out and try to get us in at least a little bit more comfortable seats in coach or whatever. Can I ask you a question about your yeah. flights in general? Is this the longest flight of your trip or you must have been on a longer flight on the way out, right? Well, the flight uh, on the way out was JFK to Rome, but that was on American Airlines. And let me tell you. And you were leaving from the East Coast. That's right. We're leaving so from New York. Some time off. Okay. Uh, I think it was about eight hours, but okay. let me tell you what. Uh, somehow on American, because I also kind of like paid a little more. I didn't seem like a lot more, but a little more for us to be in like some comfortable coach seats where it was just two of us, you know, it was just me and Bex. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I don't know what like sort of what class of service we were in, but like they gave us blankets, they gave us a whole good night kit, they served us like three meals. Our seats had like foot rests. Mm. We were not in business class, but it was like the nicest coach ticket I've ever been mm -hmm. in. I know those little so, foot rests. I haven't had like that was yeah, great. Yeah. It's interesting. And you know was... where you find those foot rests? On buses. I've I think I've had oh. it once on a plane, but is it the little metal kind that kind of that they they yeah. they're they're attached to the seat in front of you and it's like it's not a big deal, but then you use it and you're like, oh this is a nice little foot this rest. Is... Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that'll come up later, by the way, yeah, okay. because um, so that, that was the flight out. Uh, so we go to uh, I so I'm trying to make sure with with Iceland air that we have the seats that I've already reserved because I don't know, because the app is really weird. It's hard to use. It's, I can't get anyone on the phone. So I'm chatting with them. I just like because I paid extra. I really want to make sure that, like, I'm not confused about our seats or like it's not. I don't know. I was just paranoid because I don't I've never flown on this airline. And finally, I get the person on chat goes, oh, if you want to sit in like seats, whatever, 7F and 7E, it's 180 euros. Here's the link. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I already bought these. Hmm. Like I already paid for this. And the like person's like, I don't know. That doesn't, you're, it's not blocked out for you or something. And it was like, all this back and forth. Eventually they're like, okay, I think we got it worked out. But like we get to the air and I'm also constantly, you know me, I'm trying to upgrade. I'm like, well, can we be an economy Mac? Are you one world? They're like, no, I don't even know what you're talking about. Mm. I was like, are you Illuminati? They're like, yeah. yes, we are, <laughs> are you Mac. part of the one world alliance? No, yeah. I swear. Are you uh, part of the reptilian uh, <laughs> Hillary Clinton led reptilian mm -hmm. people that Alex Jones keeps talking about? Um, so we get to the airport in uh, Paris and well, the first thing is our flight is super late, which is stressful because our connection, our connection in Reykjavik is like an hour. Mm. And I was actually wrong. I thought it was 45 minutes, which seemed like madness to me. Like, how are you expecting us to get from one plane to another in 40? Like, why'd you even let us book this ticket? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I was wrong. It was actually like an hour or so. Still, though, but, that's about as, that's about, especially for international travel, that's about as short of a window or as small of a window as you could possibly yeah. manage. More on that in a moment. So... Uh, we, uh, the flight is an hour late getting to Paris. So I'm pretty freaked out already because like, I don't want to like get stuck in, in Iceland. And so, um, we get on the plane and the first thing is there are like four people on the entire flight. Like I have paid for us to be in the first row of coach. There are people just taking over entire rows of coach uh, and just going to sleep. Uh. There are like 12 empty seats in first class. Like I've never been on, I haven't been on a flight like this maybe in a long time where it's just like, I kept thinking like if this was Alaska airlines, I would definitely just go sit in first class right mm -hmm. now. You're right, but, you're right. You know, and like what I'm, this is where I want to be careful because I don't want to sound mean to an entire nation of people, but I, my sense based on just my interactions with the folks that worked at Iceland air, I mean the, the flight attendants and also the people in the airport at Reykjavik was, I don't think I, people from Iceland, I don't think mirth is a big part of the personality nationally. 
I don't think jokes go over very well. And I don't think it just doesn't seem like a jolly group of people. Mm-hmm. And there's the and language. I will... You mentioned this also. You're talking about brusqueness in Italy. You always have to keep in mind that, like, you're not yes, dealing with some people. Yes, some of it could their... be language. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I will also remind you that I was flipped off by Bjork for no reason. That Wow, that goes back a ways. When you were living in New I, York, right? I was sitting in a restaurant I loved called Shopsons, R.I.P., on Carmine Street. And I was having breakfast, probably blisters on your sisters, which was a thing they made that was delicious. And I look out the window, and Bjork is getting out of the car, and I I committed the crime of looking at her. That was it. I didn't come out and ask for an autograph. I didn't take a picture of her. I didn't give her a thumbs up. I, I merely observed in my own mind that that was Bjork, and she flipped me off and just kept walking. And I thought that was maybe her. I think it might be an Icelandic thing. <laughs> I've also had a run, and if you think about it, with Sigur Rós. Well, that's true. They're also Icelandic. You shouldn't have gone here. It you was were, not the country for me. It wasn't. You 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 should have thought about your history with these people. I know. Peoples. I should have we should have gone with Aer Lingus. Yes. They get me. Yeah. A bunch of drunk Irish people. Sure. So Air Albania so, is really your ticket if out of there. Oh my god, yeah. that you probably sit on the outside of the plane for them. <laughs> Probably on he the can wing. say that he's Albanian. Yeah, that's Just right. want to establish that as most canon. Most famous Albanian behind <laughs> Eliza Dushku. <laughs> Look it up. But anyway, so um, we get on the flight, and I'm kind of bummed because I'm like, that was such a waste of money when yeah. we could have sat anywhere. Like that, you know, I'm talking about that middle aisle thing. It's yeah. next to us. It's totally empty. Yeah, I only had that. I mean, uh, obviously, your travel experiences are very different than mine. But um, when I was leaving... Cleveland, whatever, my last trip there, maybe uh, yeah. sometime in the past year. Um, I remember it was the night before my flight home to Seattle. And what is that? Maybe a, a five hour flight topped. Uh, and I remember just thinking like, oh, I'm going to be crammed into a seat. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, you know, they really get you. They, I never thought I'd be an impulse buyer of airplane upgrades. But boy, by yeah. using the app to check in the night before, and maybe you've had too many popsicles and you're just feeling really good about things. And you're yeah. just like, you know what? I'm just going to pay the extra like $35. Like when I'm booking yeah. my tickets, I'm like the cheapest person in the world. I'm like, well, yeah. I get, you know, well, you're not going to get me with an extra bag fee. I'm, I'm booking it with like extreme prejudice. And then, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, so then I paid for it. And that was like, you know, a month before my trip or two weeks before my trip. And now here it is the day before my flight home. And I'm just checking in. They're like, you sure you don't want the, uh, the extra leg room of the emergency row, which I still think is like, it's literally an emergency row. They're telling you they need a verbal yes. I mean, you're honestly, you're like, having to work if you're in that does, row. That's, I mean, I know you're not. You. I know you're not actually doing that, but doesn't it really? I just, I don't. I can't balance those two things in my head at the same time. Which is like, oh, this is a special row for special people because you may need. We may call you into service, but if you want to be called into service, we're going to charge you an extra thirty-five, forty bucks for these seats. Like, well, I, I, and the thing that I always say on this topic is, it is. I'm not exaggerating. It's the most nervous I get for public speaking. Yeah. Right. Need is a verbal, the verbal yes. confirmation? Yes, it's, beca- it's so stressful because yes. they're going, they're going in line. Yes, yes, yes. And you're like, okay, it's almost me. Yes, it's almost me. Yes. Am I going to put any stank on it? Yippity do. Right. Oh God, why did I say that? <laughs> anyway, right. uh, I just remember kind of like I, I do end up impulse buying the upgrade because it's always the night before, and I'm like, ah, shit. Like I don't feel like yeah. getting on that plane tomorrow. And the last time I did that, I upgraded again, thirty five, forty bucks. Didn't bust the bank, but um, I get on the plane and it was almost empty. Like it, right. I mean, not not quite as empty as you're describing, but there were so many empty rows, and I could have probably just like asked the person, hey, do you mind if I move to that emergency row? I think they need them they need people on those roads probably they need so people right on those roads uh Who's so it gonna I be sorted. you yeah, you right. exactly well, so and that was part of the problem at the beginning with this whole flight i don't understand how in back when i bought the ticket somehow it like at some point must have shown me a seat map and i must have picked what seemed like the kind of like slightly better coach seats but mm-hmm. i could never get back to any sort of seat map with this iceland air situation yeah. which is so weird Every other ticket that you book, you're looking at the plane. You're going like, these are the really bad seats. These are the good seats. They're going to cost you more. This is the first class. This is prohibitively expensive. But you have some sense of like where you fall on this whole kind of spectrum of like comfort. I could never get that map working on any of the Iceland Air website or app or anything. So that was probably why I was freaking out. I was going in blind. And you know me, I'm very like 
I'm I'm very obsessed with making sure that I'm having and Becca's having like the best experience we can in these sorts of things. So we get on the plane and let me just also mention the when I say there was kind of more like Soviet than like Scandinavian vibes. This was the oldest airplane I'd ever been on mm. in my life. Even older than the one we took out to Australia, because I remember that, that one. That was literally what I brought up with Becca. I was like, yeah. this might be older than the one Andrew and I took to Australia. <laughs> Shout out to Qantas for the free tickets. Yeah, no. Appreciate you. And actually, and, and giving us a row without anybody in between. I have no complaints about that flight, but I was tempted to use the actual telephone to call <laughs> Moscow. That was on the back I of was my chain seat. smoking the entire <laughs> flight. Because <laughs> right. I had an ashtray on my thing. But like, so it was the oldest plane it was just like and like you know it was just kind of it was a little bit dispiriting but i was like all right well you know maybe we'll ha get a better plane when we're for the long flight because this was the short flight so the flight attendant comes by and i said hey i was just wondering something i go we have a very short window of time in reykjavik to get to our uh flight i go it's we have an hour layover and um we're flight our flight is an hour late she goes oh no no we're only 15 minutes late now mind you we have taken off one hour after we mm -hmm. were supposed to take off which mm -hmm. by my lights is an hour late mm -hmm. and she goes oh no no we're, we were supposed to land there at 2 30 and we land at 2 45 or whatever she goes like the flight is not as long as that says and i'm like i don't doesn't make any sense like these things are like, you know, whatever the international version of the FAA is, they've got a sense of how long these mm -hmm. flights are. They're not just like off by an hour. And she goes, it's a small airport, and uh, you don't even need to worry about it. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's nice to hear. So I'm totally like relieved, whatever, we land. And the first thing is, it is, I want to say, when we were on this flight, it's like maybe August 31st. It's summer still in most places, right? Mm-hmm. We touch down in Reykjavik. It is sleeting sideways. It has got to be 32 degrees and sideways sleet. Now, look, I'm sure there are some seasons where it's absolutely lovely up there. This day did not seem to reflect that. And what they've decided to do at the airport in Reykjavik is not have any of those jetways. Pretty much it seems like the way you get from point A to point B is you get off the plane like freaking Richard Nixon. Mm -hmm. You walk down an outdoor staircase as the sleet just is destroying you. And then you get on a shuttle bus, which takes you over to the main airport or to the airport itself. And you get off the shuttle bus and now you start walking. And the terminal was so far away from where they dropped us off. This whole idea of like, it's a small airport. I don't know what this lady was talking about. It was not a small airport. You should see the big one. <laughs> right? You call that an airport? <laughs> so we like walking forever. And then I realized, actually, I didn't realize this. I almost went past it. Becca's like, hey, over here. We had to go through Iceland like customs. Why do you have to do that if you're not even trying to stay in the country? Why don't you design? And by the way, there was an insane line. Our flight, I'm getting updates on my phone that said your flight is boarding. Mm. And we're still like just getting off the first shuttle bus. And we're walking. And then I see this insane line to get to the D gates. And it's the line, I'm not even kidding. It's, the, it's longer than any TSA line I've ever seen probably. And it is moving, but it's insanely long. And everyone in the line is freaking out. Because we, we're all uh, we're all late and we're all on different flights, and we all have to go through customs in Iceland, and I'm like, build the airport so that if you're just changing planes, you don't even ever go into Iceland. Just yeah, leave us in like international waters or something. Yeah, yeah. That that you shouldn't have to if you're just trying. And you did not have checked back. No, you must have. You had we that. We did, but they're all going. You know, they're in Those under are... the belly of the plane. They're going right, to the right, other right. plane. It's like I'm not dealing with that. Right. Like, so you're not dealing with that. Those are just moving by themselves and probably going through their own customs ritual. But you still have to go through customs with your carry-ons. Yeah, I, I feel like well, for... they're not. They don't search your carry-ons or anything. The baggage is kind of. The, I think unless you oh. have fruit or something, it's. But it it was the most. So first of all, we're in the line, and 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 I'm getting these updates on my phone that said your flight is in final boarding. And I'm like, you gotta be kidding me! First of all, the lady was, the flight attendant was completely wrong about the mm -hmm. timing of this. We were an hour late. It is a huge airport. Uh, it's full of stressed out people that are also worried about missing their flight. 
when we finally, and I mean, it took forever, we get to the person at customs, which again, I wanted to say, I don't even want to be in your stinking country. I'm mm. just trying to get to Portland. I shouldn't have yelled that. That was probably no, bad. I feel, yeah, I feel like that was We a get the most stern. Now, by the way, we went through Italy, France, and Ireland. Went through three different countries, and it was just like clunk, clunk, like just a rubber stamp. Like, okay, we're going to have fun. Enjoy yourself. Bonjour. This was the most intense interview we did the whole time. The, the woman was like, uh, where have you been? And we're like, uh, well, Europe on vacation. How many days? What day did you start your trip? I'm like, lady, I don't know what day it is right now. Mm -hmm. Like, you're asking the wrong person. And then she's looking. She goes, have you two been traveling together the whole time? And I'm like, yes. And then she's looking at my passport. She's looking at Becca's passport. She's looking at my passport. And she's just like, for like a minute, she's just staring at it silently. And I'm like, she goes, did you go through different lines when you were in in Rome or something? And I was like, I think we did. Because you wait in a line for the passport, but it's like whichever one is ready next. Yeah. You just go. And like I went to one and Becca went to the other one. She's like looking at it like very suspiciously. And I'm just like, again, I don't even want to be here. I'm just trying to get on my flight. Why, why, are, why, are you, why is this the most intense like interview we've done of all of these things when you can tell that we're literally just going from point A to point B to leave your country. You're like, literally, I, don't even know I mean, we... again, so I thought you were going to tell us a story when you first set this up that like you spent one day there because you needed to, because of the flight situation, you're like, well, I'm here, I might as well. Your only experience with Iceland is as a way station, as just a, yes. a just an airport connecting flight. It's nothing yes. more than that. That's your entire trip. You're never leaving the airport. So I can speak from some authority on this country. I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> well, well, there's it's the that. worst hour of my life. Well, there is that. I feel like we're making between like through three <laughs> very specific things: an interview with Sierra Rose, uh, a, a, a being being flipped off a by breakfast Bjork. interrupted by yes. Bjork's middle finger, and yes. one day in a Reykjavik not airport, even a day. We're talking a, an hour and a couple of hours, and now the the you've you've got but the none book. of it a good experience. <laughs> You've got the book on Iceland. Okay, we, we'll put that I'm aside. I'm saying it's a trend piece. Oh, in the New York Times. Although I am, I am siding with you though on I am the in, customs the thing. The customs thing is really intense for so you're and someone's going to email us and connecting. say like this is international rules and I I think we did have to go through the same thing in Ireland. So like I know this is not Iceland specific. I understand it is just the rule, but it's a weird rule to yeah. me because it seems like it's very very avoidable. It seems like. You build these airports in such a way that there is you just route people from the flight they were on to the flight they're getting on. And then they never even have to, like, technically be in your country. Like, this seems like they'd be so much easier. It's supposed and to then, be a one world alliance. Thank you. It's supposed to be uh, a shadowy cabal <laughs> of right. Illuminati that are running the world. Like, if, if the one world alliance doesn't bring you the ability to have a layover in a What's country the, without even, having the to good go, of it. <laughs> that's right. So we get finally get through that, and now we're, like, running because, again, I'm getting these updates on my phone that are saying your flight is in final boarding. And I'm just like, this is madness. We've done everything by the rules here. Your flight was late. We had to go through your silly customs. Um, I'm like, we're now running through the airport. I hate that look. It's very mm -hmm. embarrassing to me. But anyway, we're now, like, basically jogging. We get to what I hope is the gate. Guess what it is? Another shuttle bus. Another outdoor walk to a mm. shuttle bus as it's sleeting sideways before we can go to yet another airplane that's out on the tarmac. You think if there's one airport where they would really mm. invest in the infrastructure of jetways, mm -hmm. you would think it would be Iceland. Mm -hmm. It just seems like because we're there during the nice part of the year, I presume. Like, I can't imagine what it's like in January there. Or, I'm sorry, January. Mm -hmm. Daniel. Daniel. January <laughs> like I was so okay we t take the bus uh to the like couldn't the first bus have just taken us to the other plane it just seems like that would have been easier we got on one bus to go to the thing oh by the way when we got to what I thought was our gate which turned out to be yet another shuttle bus I'm all like kind of out of breath and I and, and honestly I'm pretty I'm pretty annoyed at this nation now and there's two gate agents and the one gate agent is like a very humorless dude, and then the other is like a very humorless woman. And the humorless woman is standing in exactly the thing. we Like, she's standing blocking the thing we're supposed to go through, if you can imagine this. So there's a like a podium with the, the, the male gate agent, 
And then there's an opening, like in the fencing or whatever you want to call it. And then the female gate agent is just standing there. So first I say to the uh, male gate agent, I go, it's a heck of a system you've got here. Mm. And he goes, he looks at me with a look that says, is this a terroristic statement? Mm -hmm. Like, he doesn't look at me like, it doesn't even, it isn't even like he's like, that's not funny. He looks at me like, what? Like, I just said something like I have a bomb or mm -hmm. something. Like, he looked at me like he was about to call security for me saying, this is quite a system you've got here. And then he just like looks and goes, what? And I go, nothing, nothing. Like, I didn't even want to get into it. I was like, I'm not trying to get, you know, kicked off this flight or whatever. I give him our tickets or whatever. And then he gives them back to me. And then Beck and I look at each other and we think, well, this woman is blocking this area. So clearly the thing is you have to go around this other side of it. So we start to go to the other side of it and they both yell at us, no, this way. I'm like, the way that you are blocking? Like, what is happening in this country? Like, you're standing, you're ob you're obstructing the thing we're supposed to go through. But then you're mad at us that we're, was I supposed to bull charge you? What I'm already on your list here for saying quite a system you have here. So she finally moves like two inches and we it, we squeeze past her to the second shuttle bus to the airplane, which when we board the airplane, Andrew, it's about, mm, I don't know, 70,000 degrees. So you do on make it though. So it was, so in a certain way, like after all of this, so I just want to, I want to back up and talk about this timeline yeah, for a second. Please. So you're in the air and you're like, <laughs> I'm backing it up. Okay. So you're getting ready to go on your big trip to Europe. Yeah. No. Um, so you're in the air and you're like, we're going to be an hour late. And the flight attendant says, no, because of the timing or whatever, you're going to be about 15 minutes late when we land. About how late are you actually when the flight lands? Is it actually, is she pretty close? It ends up being about 15 minutes off of the scheduled time. I don't know exactly the timing. But what I know was when we were, when the, our airplane had, was yet to stop and let us off the airplane. Okay. So mm -hmm. we were still yeah. on flight number one, taxiing around and taxiing Reykjavik. around. Okay. Yeah. I get an update on my phone that our flight is boarding. Yes. Okay. So that you said that, like you, you that, and that's what's been living in my head. And then you, you know, it's done taxing. Like you, let's add another 10, 15 minutes to get off that plane. You're going through this intense custom situation, the long line. Are you in the airport for another, what, 15? You must be in for no, another like 20 45 minutes. minutes. 45 minutes. Yeah. I think they held the flight. They must have held it. Okay. So many people. Okay. But gotcha. they weren't telling us that. Okay. They weren't saying, like, Hey, by the way, don't stress. We're holding your flight. They were sending me updates on my phone. I probably still have them. Like, if I scroll back, they were just sending me updates like, this is final boarding for your flight. Okay. Like, your flight is leaving. Like, okay, you live yeah. in Iceland now. And just for the record, you're not on trial here. The, the, you will be later if you keep on harassing mm -hmm. gate agents. But no, I'm just trying to get a, kind of a sense of this in my mind. So now you're rushing to this area where you're you're getting... This woman is blocking you. That is not... Are these gate agents, or is this another shuttle situation? You said that this woman well, was blocking... gate block agents, except when you get past them, instead of getting on the plane, you get on another bus. Another bus that takes you to the foot of an airplane, airplane. on a tarmac. It takes you to it the foot you, of the airplane uh, on the where, tarmac. With those things. Okay, and so... You then, so when you walk on the plane, is it pretty clear that you guys are like the last ones? Or are there other people who yes, are making and everyone this? on the plane is mad at us because they think we were just like lollygagging. And the plane has been sitting there waiting for us. Truly, we, that, that really is it. Because you've had this experience yes. before, I think, where you're like the last one. And or maybe it was yeah, a and usually that's because I'm that. just being, you know, yeah, lazy okay. or something. This was like everybody's I was watching kind of you two get on. It's hot as hell. Yeah, and everyone's just like annoyed because they've been sitting there probably for an extra forty-five minutes or whatever it is, you know, waiting to take off. And now they finally put us on, and the plane is like they're like not, you know, it's been super hot. Some it was mm -hmm. freezing outside, but it's hot on the plane. They're playing, by the way, Bjork, the song Venus as a Boy, and oh, yeah. I know this because I shazammed it when we got on the plane. Mm -hmm. I thought a little on the nose, Iceland Air. I had that record. It was a good you're playing. Record. You're playing Bjork on the flight? Okay. Um, we get to our seats. And first of all, there is, so it's it's uh, three seats. So there's like the window seat, the middle seat, and then the aisle. And like, I guess I'm the window and Becca's the middle or whatever we can switch. But we're the we're the, the, uh, the window and the middle. And there is like um, a very, very humorless, I have to presume Icelandic person, woman, uh, sitting in the aisle seat. And I get to her. And I say, um, you know, I'm just waiting. Kind of like, excuse me, I need to get past you to my seat or whatever. And I don't obviously want to, like, make physical contact with her, but she refuses to look up from her book. Hmm. 
And I swear to God, she just kind of glances up at me and glances back at her book and then just pulls her knees back like the tiniest bit mm. so that I can kind of limbo past her as can Becca. And that person proceeded to say absolutely zero words to us for the next eight hours. We sit down in these seats and the uh, to, I'm looking over at the uh, so we're the front row of coach, which seems like it's going to it's nice, but it's actually not. It's very shitty. The seats are it's this plane is older than the first plane mm -hmm. we were on. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the back of the first seats of, of first class where everyone else has a screen on their on that they're looking at, including the people that are on like we're on the right side of the plane, the left side of coach. There are digital screens on the back of the seats. Our seats have a big blank plastic square <laughs> where the <laughs> entertainment center should be. It's like giving a kid a, a, a remote control and telling them to play with it like it's a phone. They just gave you right? something. So it's, it's like, like giving a kid a garage door opener it. and telling yeah, them right. it's a walkie-talkie. <laughs> right, exactly. Wait, how did I make that story sad? No. Um, and so what we have in our row for some reason are these like bizarre again like 19 the just primo 1980s technology weird arm thing that you pull out from kind of like in part of your chair and then rotate over and it has like a screen roughly the size of my cell phone okay that completely makes it impossible for anyone to get in and out of the row if the entertainment center is going so now you know how it is like with the trays and stuff. And this is why you like to be on the aisle because you hate having to tell, ask people, can I get out? Exactly. Like I'd rather you just disturb my situation and I'll, yes. I'll get out and let you out. I don't want to be the one who's like, oh, I've been holding in pee for two hours because I don't want to And the whole reason you. that I also always try to get the first row of coaches because there's oftentimes enough room that you don't have to. or I'll t So my whole hierarchy of, of coach tickets is – either the first row of coach or the exit row, but somewhere where I can conceivably get around the person who's sitting on the aisle without having to bother them. You can definitely mm -hmm. do that on the exit row. I mean, they're built for that because you're supposed to be able to get a lot of people through if you've got a sully on the Hudson type of situation going. So that's completely ruined now because we have this like weird, archaic entertainment technology. Also, I will say this. The worst, Becca and I could not believe how bad the content was that was available on these little televisions. It seems, and I say this with peace and love because I met him recently and he was a nice enough guy, but it seems as if there's been some sort of deal struck between Chuck Lorre and Iceland Air hmm. because almost all the content was Chuck Lorre related. It was Big Bang Theory. It was Young Sheldon. It was Bob Hart Abishola, which I don't think you knew that, but that's another show he does on CBS. There was the Kamitsky uh, effect or whatever that show is called with like Michael Douglas and Alan Arkin or yeah, Alan Arkin and mm. Michael Douglas turns out made by Chuck Lorre. All of the content on this thing was Chuck Lorre related. What's the Bob Hart thing that you mentioned? I'm trying to figure out what Bob you just... Hart Abishola. It's like a sitcom where Billy Gardell, who's sort of a stand up comedian, has a wife who I think maybe is originally from Africa or he has a girlfriend is originally from Africa whose name is Abishola. Oh, Bob Hart's Abishola. Oh, um, y oh, yes. I think I maybe caught wind of this a while back, but it is not. But it's like, it's okay. just like, all I was like is, can you just throw up some curb? Can you just give us a couple mm. seasons of curb on here? Like, it was just the weirdest. I did watch the Blade Runner, and that was actually pretty dope. So I will give them credit for that. But basically, we were getting the worst of all worlds. We were the only people that didn't have the, the normal screens. I look over to the, again, the mirror image of where we were, where there's one lady by herself with all three seats. And she's just like sprawled out like queen of the castle with her great digital screen. You know what else she has? Footrests hmm. under every seat. Guess what we have? No footrests. It's like the bottom of the seat has been torn off. It's just like missing parts. Were they punishing from the you? Seat. What's that? Were they punishing you? Maybe they heard what I said to the gate agent about quite a system you've got here. Maybe. But, or maybe um, it goes back to your New York days. Is it a cigarette thing? Yeah, or a cigarette thing. Yeah. Maybe. You know what? I never even thought about this. This could all be connected. Is it possible that Bjork flipped me off because she heard about what I said to cigarettes? Did that happen and after the cigarettes thing?
It happened. I was I was living in New York. It probably happened after. Yeah, because Sigur Rós was right at the beginning of the Bryant Park project, and she identified you as the radio host as she quickly got who, out of a cab. Who was who asked very poor questions mm-hmm. of her countrymen, the guys from mm-hmm. Sigur Rós. She was like, "He's on the list." I wonder if my name is Mud in Iceland, and this Something all happened. of this makes so much more sense. Or the original sin, sin is pre Sigur Rós, and that's also part of the part of the retribution. What did I do pre? Did I trample on a fairy garden or something? Yeah, I don't. I can't answer that question. I think you have to do some reflecting. It appears that that is not the country for me. Uh, is all I can say. Mm-hmm. Um, we we somehow we survived the flight, although it was a long and eight hours. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was the other thing. Uh, the bathrooms, the lights didn't work in either of the bathrooms, and the floors were wet, Ooh. like sticky wet. But you couldn't really see what was down there because none of the lights turned on. Maybe they're just the like, we don't want to deal with this mess. Let's just keep the lights off. Oh, my gosh, Andrew. I forgot to tell you. I want to get to your feelings about your trip, but I want to tell you this is my last travel tip. Mm-hmm. This is a what not to do. I was not sure if I was going to tell you about this or not or tell the listeners. This involves our flight from New York to Rome. Okay. So I mentioned... We were in the front of coach, and I was really hungry in the airport, and they have these little machines at JFK that have kind of like sort of relatively healthy food, like it's like a vending machine, but it's got like salads in like a little plastic kind of tube thing, or there was like tortilla chips and some guacamole, right? Mm -hmm. So I get the tortilla chips and guacamole, which I guess isn't really healthy food, but whatever. And I was so hungry, but our our flight starts boarding, so I'm eating it, like we get in our seat, and I'm eating it. But now I'm done, and there's this, just imagine a clear plastic box with a lid that pops up and pops back yeah. down. That's the kind you get out of a vending machine or something. Yeah, like a, a smaller version of what I'm getting my mixed greens in exactly. at the grocery store. Precisely. Okay. But mm-hmm. imagine a, a version, I'm just going to show you, that's like this. Yeah, big, a little you know, bit so smaller. It's, it's, yeah. And I, <laughs> so I finished these chips. And now I don't want this garbage anymore, but I don't know really what to do with it. They're boarding the plane. No, there's international flights. So it's like the boarding of the plane takes a long time. There's a lot of people. And I don't know what to do with it. And we're right by the bathroom. Like the bathroom and coach is right there, which is kind of convenient. And I like think, well, they have a garbage in there, don't they? And I, so I like open the door. I get on my seat. I open the door of the bathroom and I look in there and there is a garbage, but it's kind of like, it's it's a little bit too the slot for the garbage yeah. is a little bit too narrow for this thing. Yeah, that's what I'm picturing because it's built into the wall. We all are familiar yeah. with air, airplane bathrooms. It's like so it's sort up of built on in. the counter. Uh, okay, it's like yeah. a thing. Yeah. So I kind of push, I wedge it in there. I don't want to like jam it in there, but yeah. I'm just like my thought is I don't want this anymore. It's garbage. It will end up like when the flight attendants come through and spiffy up the bathroom at some point, it will become part of the garbage. I don't know. This wasn't a good idea, and I regret it. Now, a quick but question. I, Hold on. You are throwing this in the garbage. You're asking yourself, well, is this a good idea? Is it not? Are you in there with the door closed, or are you just reaching in? And so, I'm just like, reaching in. You're reaching in, so people can observe this behavior. But no one's really noticing. It's okay. kind of, people are, everyone's getting settled in. It's not like I'm. flight attendants aren't noticing. No one's noticing it. So I basically kind of push this thing gently kind of into this garbage slot, but not really in there. It's basically just resting against it. And what must have happened was as the plane started taxiing or something, this little plastic thing just must have drifted across this countertop and just fallen right into the toilet. Oh, no. Because what happened was the flight attendant, as she's going around kind of like, you know, the plane starting to do its thing on the runway and we're all getting buckled in and they're going around last second things. She just opens the door of the bathroom. She looks in and she just literally says, ah, hell no. Shuts the bathroom and puts it out of commission. And I said, well, what's going on in there? She's like, someone tried to flush something in there and I am not dealing with that. So this is in the moments before this is at the beginning of an eight hour flight to Europe. The bathroom is now shut down because of something I did. So, no, 
you're assuming that that thing dropped into the toilet. It's the only explanation that makes so sense. Essentially, so essentially, so I guess I mean, and I, I, I you know, I'm not even going to worry about your feelings on this one. So you're <laughs> you're shoving this into the slot, and it doesn't fit. I mean, even best case scenario, it stays in place, but it basically makes the garbage like out of commission for everybody else. It was if, going to be jammed. Not in out of there. commission. I was just. Yes, it was. First of all, it was a bad move by me. Okay, it was a bad move. I was putting something that was garbage adjacent to a place where garbage goes. You were just setting it I on the it, counter, essentially. I guess I was basically setting it on the counter. I was okay. kind of leaning it into the slot, but basically setting it on the counter. That was a dumb move. I shouldn't have done it. Should just held on to it. But I didn't want it anymore, and I thought I was putting it closer to where garbage happens than my seat. Um, and uh, that was a bad idea because it slipped and landed in the toilet. And the flight attendant didn't understand what had happened. She thought someone had tried to flush some huge object in the toilet. And she was not about to go fishing around in that toilet. Like, she seemed like a flight attendant mm. who'd seen a lot in her life and was not going to try to problem solve this. She saw an object in the toilet because no one had been in that That's bathroom. Okay. This since is I what I was getting at. This is what I was trying to get to. So I was trying to figure out if somebody had gone in there and used the restroom and you didn't really notice. And then what nope. they did was they peed on top of this thing or worse. No, no um, one had been in. Except so really, me. And, and I mean, I know, I know a bat, you know, I know what a toilet is like on an airplane. I could have fished it out. Yeah. You just, even but if it I was had your already own thing, there's very little dumb. water in there. Yeah. 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 I could have reached in with my hand and just picked this thing out by the corner and it would have been totally fine. But the problem was I had to ask her, Hey, what happened? And then yeah. she said, Somebody tried to flush something down, and I am not dealing with that. By the way, Andrew, guess what I had in my hand? The lid. Another box of oh. tortilla <laughs> chips. <laughs> the exact same. I got two. And I just like, when you, if you could have seen me slide the other one under my shirt as she was explaining to me what was in the toilet. No, no, no. You, had, you, should, have fl you should have waved that around loud and proud because you've been... You could have said, it's clearly not mine. Mine is still I've right got here. Mine. I still got mine here. Oh, no, dude. I would have been so guilt by association. Uh, but, I, yeah, I but, mean, I'm wondering if in that moment, am I going to volunteer? I'm just wondering if and the answer to this may very well be no. But me, if me, Andrew, did everything that you just did, and then she said, hell no, and I wouldn't. made that realization, would I have said, Oh no! Is it a is it like a chip container? That might be mine. I can grab it. If there's a chance, as long as nobody had gone wish, on it. But no, I mean, I that, that, that's, that's what I would. I'm not done. saying I would. I'm just ask, I'm just like trying to. I'm, tr I'm she truly was so trying to figure it out. upset about it. Yeah. That I felt like I was going to be in so much trouble that yeah. I couldn't fess up to it. Yeah, I don't like but to be I in trouble. And here's the problem. They don't have an out of order sign. You know what they have? You know what happens? They lock it and it says. They use Occupy. the blood of the lamb. They do. They put it over the lintel of the door <laughs> so that the angel of death passes over. <laughs> uh, no, you know what the problem is? It's th There's not a special like thing for out of order for like Luke got a chip container mm -hmm. in the toilet. It just says occupied. You know what else? When else it says occupied? When someone's using it. Yeah. For the next eight hours, Becca had to explain to each and every person who came up, oh, that one's out of order. Because mm. people were just constantly coming up to the bathroom and seeing occupied mm -hmm. and thinking, okay, someone's using it. I'll wait for them. And then she would have to say, uh, yeah, somebody's, uh, it's, it's broken. Sorry, it's broken. It's broken. That is the a weird thing to leave up to a passenger. Flight. Yeah. You're sitting very close to the, um, I wonder if that was it a was, blessing in disguise because maybe was, you would have had I, that You know what? I kind of wondered about that too. Um, you know, it was... I mean, in a way, it was ideal because they were just far enough away that it wasn't like right on top of us, but like we could very easily get to it if we needed to. But maybe that was I just felt really bad because I was like, I mean, and, and this was a huge plane that had like a bunch of bathrooms. So it was kind of fine. Yeah. Like there were a lot of other places to go. What I will say about Iceland Air, I don't want to go back to that dark place, but the plane, along with being uh, roughly 100 years old. I believe the Wright brothers actually hmm. um, flew this uh, plane to Iceland uh, for its first voyage. Um, the Along with being very old, it didn't have any bath. It had two bathrooms at the way back of the plane. I mean, there was a first-class bathroom, but I was not going to try with these Iceland Air flight attendants to mess with the first-class bathroom. So they just had these two really shoddy coach bathrooms, which were not enough because the second flight was packed. It was almost full except for the lady who had two seats empty everywhere else totally full so it was like it was just it was miserable it yeah. was very I, I i cannot not recommend uh iceland and iceland air enough 
eight That's hours my final travel that flight too. was. Well, we'll get into my journey here in a little yeah. bit, but my first flight is 10 hours. And so I've oh, been wow. sort of trying to prepare myself for that because the longest flight I've ever been on was the 13 hour flight that you and I did Australia. to Australia. And I remember like 13 hours, my brain was scrambled. Like I, I stopped having yeah. emotions that I recognized at a certain point. Like mm, I literally, sure. like it's a blur to me. Like you and I, I remember like you and I trying to figure out if that orb in the sky at one point. Yeah, we were literally like was is that staring the, sun or the moon at the sun or the moon and t- had completely lost our mind. I'm pretty sure we decided that it, we landed on it was a black hole sun. Um, uh huh. Won't you come? Won't you come? Uh, and so anyway, like I'm I'm sort of trying to gear up for that. I have no idea what our airplane situation is going to be like or what the room is going to be like. I'm assuming I'm not a middle seater, but yeah, no, ten hours is well. What airline are you? Let on? me put it in context. It's not as long as 13 but it's more than eight somehow eight feels like a five hour flight like am i right yeah, eight in, feels okay like five like, is basically seattle to the east coast right yeah depending maybe five and a half maybe and five like and a half six is like New York. seattle to miami is like six okay. maybe six and a half because they're going so, corner to corner of the country yeah um and then and so like i'm used to like kind of a long flight being you know between five and a half hours or something like that um except for then and, and that's sort of like well i'm still the same person when i get on and i get off i'm just a little bit tired yeah. and maybe a little bit crabby maybe i watched two movies and had two cranberry vodkas or whatever yeah but it's a pretty long flight but you get through it but then there was something about the 13 hour flight that was I don't even know like you buckle in you become different people throughout like it becomes yes. this sort of like, I took I was taking a bunch of like herbal sleep <laughs> something called Valiant I think not that Valium, was, that was for Australia that, right not this yeah. one yeah yeah no I didn't take anything for this one yeah and so I feel like eight is like an extended version of five like you're still in that like kind of like well that's a long flight but like there was something about 13 hours in a certain way your body just I think like shuts down or something yeah. I don't know and it yeah. was just like an odyssey I'd put it more like that and um and so this one is 10 and I'm guessing that a 10 hour flight is going to be closer to that Australia Australian flight sort of that's pretty that's going to be pretty epic depending on well do you know what airline are you on well it's a Delta. we the tickets are through delta but it says it'll be a partner airline so i'm not entirely Mm. sure if it'll be a delta plane or not delta you should be okay i think i mean as long as it's not iceland air i think you're going to be all right what if that's the partnership can we um do this can we thank some uh donors today and then can we can i can before you sail off Mm-hmm. Into the sunset. Can I get a little update on how you're feeling about everything? Sounds good. Thank you for being a ten. What if, like, the first three donors were in Iceland? I, you know, <laughs> I have the spreadsheet in front of me because we're going to be thanking donors here. And as you were talking, I'm like, I'm just going to do a quick search for the word Iceland and just see if anywhere no it doesn't look like we have any donors from Iceland it looks like we did can you about spell Reykjavik an hour off the top ago. of your head yeah right. <laughs> no listen Iceland I'm sure is a, a fantastic place I'm sure we're going to get a bunch of listeners saying like the, it's the best vacation I've ever had in my life um I, I bet you that it is a wonderful place I think I just I just visited on a bad day mm-hmm. <laughs> well you didn't visit you were going through the airport they had a Sabaro in the airport. And I didn't even get to try it. It was a real <laughs> bummer. Uh, we got to thank Laura Steiger of Bellingham, Washington. What up, Laura? Hey, Laura. Thank you, as always. The city of subdued expectation, a.k.a. the Bay City. That's right. My very favorite places. Uh, Kathleen Munns is in Bloomington, Minnesota. Oh, nice. I feel like, I think I said this last time, I think my friend Amy Dickinson from Wait, Wait, and Ask Amy. I think her brother was the mayor of Bloomington, Minnesota at some point. Maybe Kathleen knew him. Uh, Glenn Rosen is from Newton, 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 Mass. Massachusetts, yes. Newton. Newton. Okay. Because sometimes that can be Newtown. Yeah, I think this one's Newton. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is Newton, Mass. Thanks, Glenn. Mm -hmm. How about Michelle and Larry Little from Port Angeles, Washington? Port Angeles. That's uh, Raymond Carver territory, right? Is that oh, where... is that true? Uh, I one didn't of those know guys, that. Port, yeah, it's, is it is it Raymond Carver, Port uh, Angeles, Raymond Carver? Is that yeah the rain? Well, I think I think that he uh, I think he lived there. Oh, I didn't know famously. that. That's interesting. I think. And then did he go down to Los Angeles to Port Angeles? Because I feel like wasn't he writing about that kind of L.A. noir a lot? 
I, you know what? You, I should be able to tell you that, and I just don't know enough of Raymond's work, mm-hmm. but I, I think he did spend some time in Port Angeles, and I know that Michelle and Larry Little have, because yeah. that's where they are. Yeah. Eric Hamilton is spending time in Walla Walla, nice. Washington. One of the most beautiful Walla Walla, Washington. Yeah, a fun name, you know. So much fun to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Sheila. It's our oh, friend Sheila, Sheila Reeks, Reeks in Ithaca, New York. Dear friend, I believe, of one David Ross. Oh, because they hang out uh, in Ithaca all the time, aren't they? Aren't they? Aren't they friends from back in the day? Dude, I can't remember what's a spoof and what's not anymore. I feel like that's come up, but I wasn't sure if it was part of the sort of. I like think nuts Sheila on knew Broadway Dave. I think Sheila knew yeah. Dave Ross back in okay. the day or something. If I, all right. if I remember, okay. right. I thought yeah. you were just teasing because they're both no. I'm from not there. messing okay. with you. Okay. I believe Sheila. Get at me. I think Sheila knows Dave Ross. Okay. Well, the one thing we do know for sure is that Ithaca is gorgeous. It sure is. It absolutely is. Uh, thank you so much to all of our donors. Thanks for making TBTL possible. We really do appreciate it. Even on a day when I spent the most of the episode complaining about <laughs> a nation of people that did absolutely nothing to mm-hmm. me, except flip me off and do a very bad uh, music interview with me. Now, Andrew, you are going to be heading to... Are you guys going directly to Croatia? We are. We stop in the Netherlands. So the oh. the ten hour flight, and this is. I mean, we're having this wait. conversation literally on the eve of me leaving. So this is. Wait a sec, though. The ten hours mind. is it broken up? Is it ten hours to Schiphol? Uh, it is. I don't know what Schiphol. That's the airport that you're probably going to in the Netherlands. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, uh, we are going. I believe, and I don't have this in front of me right now, although I I could. Uh, It's my understanding that we'll be flying directly from the West Coast here of the U.S., Uh from Seattle to um, to Amsterdam, uh, and then from Amsterdam to Croatia, I believe. Split, Amsterdam, 10 hours, 15 minutes. Yes, that's exactly what I have in front of me here, so that's going to be a little bit over 10 hours. Um, And so, yeah, there's a lot of uh, of, um, questions. Again, I'm... Uh, I am leaving tomorrow. Our flight is actually a reasonable time. It's like one thirty in the afternoon. But because it's an international flight, and also, by mm-hmm. the way, because the SeaTac airport is still dealing with a major cyber attack that's been what? that's happened like two weeks ago. Well, you were out of town for this. So do you not even know about this? Like, no. I don't understand how we're all so chill about what happened. Like, uh, I'm trying to think. It was about two weeks ago, maybe even more at this point, that um, and it's still. I don't think we have any answers as to who was behind it. But the um, SeaTac Airport, and, and to varying degrees, the concerns inside SeaTac Airport was hit with some major. Um, they believe it's a cyber attack, but I don't think they've associated anybody with it. It affected flights sort of sporadically. It didn't sound like it was something that like shut down the entire airport for a while. So maybe that's why it's not bigger news but i do know that international flights were um hampered more than anything Jeez. else um uh, one of our friends so our we're going with a big friend group out there to croatia and all of our friends have left at sort of different times and already two people have already headed that way and our friend anita went um uh, i don't again i my timeline is kind of messed up but closer to the attack uh the hi- cyber attack i should say and she said that like um her flight was only delayed by an hour, which wasn't too bad. But then, like an entire week later, our our, our friend Katie uh, goes mm-hmm. to the airport to fly over there, and she's taking photos. They have a um, arrivals and departures board at the S gate that is handwritten on a marker board. Still, oh, that's encouraging, right? Exactly. And I'm still like kind of like, and it's just like I remember there was a a headline in the Seattle Times maybe a few days after the cyber attack that said quote um suspicious individuals believed to be behind uh, cyber attack like oh really oh fa- thank you uh, oh, they're suspicious individuals who are behind it that makes sense i thought it was going to be the people down. yeah right we got well we narrowed it down so i'm a little bit confused about all of that i'm confused why we're not making a bigger deal of this i'm confused i mean this is <laughs> this is i don't know i feel like there we should be careful around airline stuff we're going up in the air for 10 hours but i assume that it'll be safe i assume that there won't be any delays but i am you know tomorrow morning we got to get there we're going to allow a full 2 hours at the airport I did is what that. we're scheduling in all directions on this trip that I went on, which is so unusual for me, but yeah. I was very glad that I did. Yeah. Not even because, like, and in fact, we ended up for our all of our flights, like, in, not the one in Iceland, but everything else, it was smooth sailing, and we had, like, too much time at the gate. But still, 
you yes. know, the international stuff just kind of stresses you out. Yeah, you know, if you find yourself, you know, like, uh, you know, missing a connecting flight in, in, in I, I don't know, Detroit or, or Madison or something, like, it's doable. It's going to be an annoyance. But I think that, right. like, finding yourself, like, if you had missed your flight in Reykjavik, like, that would be, like, that would be a whole thing, you know? Like, yeah. and so I, yeah. I we want to avoid I have to live any in the <laughs> Yes. Was there really a Sabaro? I thought you were just joking. There really was, oh, and really? I thought that was the weirdest thing. <laughs> it is, that is a culture clash. Um, it does make me want pizza pretty badly, though, just mentioning that. But, um, yeah, so uh, we're going to get there to, like, 1130 or something like that, and I still need to, like, as we speak right now to the day before, and I'm a little bit anxious. I have some more things to record with Genevieve, but then i got to start packing. Genevieve was, like, packing this weekend. Like, I can't... I think this has something to do with me being a bit of a homebody. I, I think that, like, when especially when I'm leaving my home, I don't like packing too early because I start to feel like I'm in two places at once, if that makes sense. Hmm. I try to sure. – I'm almost the opposite of other people. Like, if, you're, if you have an afternoon flight at the end of your vacation, some people might say, hey, let's go to the beach for an hour or two before our flight. I'm like, no, 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 no. Flight <laughs> days are flight days. Like, I'll, go, I'll have a <laughs> croissant with you somewhere. You wouldn't and then have we'll gone go to, to the, the Eiffel airport. Tower with me and Becca. Probably not, unless I was forced to. But um, So, yeah, I, I was actually kind of impressed with that. Too. I'm like, yeah. And, but again, that I don't think most people are like me and, and good thing they're not. But I'm kind of the opposite in leaving my home, maybe because I don't like leaving my home. I just I'm kind of like, I don't want to start packing things up and start wondering, like, do I need this now or do I need it later? I'm just like, uh -huh. I will get all of my work done. And like, you know, I have to record some things with Genevieve because we're going to be missing some after these messages. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. And then I'm going to get all of that work done. And then I'm going to make a transition in my mind to say, OK, now I am packing and then I will um, and start that process and starting to figure out what I need to download on my lappy lap. Um, yes, that's what do I that. call my laptop. In case, for in case all they have is Bob Hart Abashola. Yes, uh, hearts and the Kaminsky method. Um, so anyway, that's where I am now. I'm. Uh, are you, you looking know... forward to the trip? Are you a little anxious right now? Or yeah. you are anxious. You've said that. Yeah. But are you are you ex I, like are you looking forward to the trip? or Are you slightly dreading it? I am looking. F I am looking. I'm looking forward to coming home. At the end of the trip, <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I've been kind of struggling with this, and so this was like this was a trip that sort of like just sort of happened. Like Genevieve mm -hmm. started, I, I, it's really strange. Like I can't read. I think I must have missed some. You know, I, we're going because our friend Anita is Croatian and her family is from there and she's spent tons of time there and she's a, you know, kind of a dual citizen, I think. And so, yeah, I know she is. And so anyway, and so we've always kind of talked about like, yeah, someday we'll go there and like Croatia is going to be beautiful. Y I'm you, really jealous. I w yeah. We would have gone with you if not for Pink Martini, who would only do Livewire huh. on the 12th of September. And so I we I tried to move an episode of Livewire so that we could all be there together. And I'm very jealous of all of you being in Croatia. Pink Martini, coincidentally or not coincidentally, an Icelandic band out to get uh -huh. you. Again. Another Icelandic band that has it out for me. That's right. Um, demonstrably untrue. I am. Well, here's the deal. I like everything that you've been talking about. Traveling abroad has definitely like. It continued to ignite the part that's exciting to me, which is like that feeling of getting off a plane and being like, this is like nowhere else I've been before, even more mm -hmm. so than and like I've never been to Western Europe either. I mean, I, I don't know. Is Croatia Central Europe? I don't know how you know. It's still probably Western. I don't I don't really know. It's on the other side of Italy. Right. You have Italy, the mm -hmm. boot, cowboy yeah. boot. Then you have the what is it? The Adriatic like Sea, whatever. It's on the other side of the I, I'm going to guess yeah, here, the Adriatic Mediterranean, sea. Mediterranean or Adriatic Sea, the, the, the waterway well, that goes between it's the all all the Mediterranean, but then some of them have different names. Oh, we were looking like, this up yeah, yeah. when we were there. Okay. Um, it's very confusing. Yeah. So anyway, uh, my point is like, this is literally like, I am excited because like how many people get to get to go to that part of the world? It's been described to me. as just like, just absolutely beautiful. We're going to be like spending a couple of nights in like kind of the city of split. Um, yes. And then we're going out to we're taking, I guess, a ferry out to this island where and again, we're staying in this house with like, I think there's seven of us maybe total now, maybe somewhere between six and eight of us. I mean, the fact that I don't know that is interesting. Um, and it sounds like it's going to be like kind of like paradise, which is 
nice. But the thing is, and I kind of am late to understand this. Again, I sort of just sort of fell into this. I sort of I felt like I just learned that I was going on this trip at some point. And then I was like, okay. Um, and I guess it is going to be what would be like your per I feel like this is your ideal. It's going to be like everybody hanging out in this house for like seven days and just basically hanging out at the pool all the time, which, you know, sounds fun for people who like to hang out at the pool all the time. But that's not exactly, you know, I feel like I've sort of I feel like I've sort of spent the majority of my adulthood avoiding uh, pool parties mm -hmm. and communal living. And so this is kind of the sweet spot of you those two like things overlapping. You do like the pool when you and Genevieve go on trips, but is that different with yeah, the group environment? Yeah, that's just me, and I feel a little bit more anonymous. And, you know, mm -hmm. I obviously have body image issues and just comfort. Like, you know, we spent some time <laughs> earlier this week or maybe last week talking about how I'm uncomfortable, like, hanging out of somebody's house with my shoes off. I'm not usually, like, huge into socializing how about shirt with off? my is shirt, off. Comfortable? shirt off. Shirt off, shoes. <laughs> off yeah exactly <laughs> um so as i sort of realized oh this trip is going to be like the, a majority of people like kind of just enjoying pool time together kind of like oh this is going to be interesting because i'm going to lose a lot of autonomy you know like the things that are important mm -hmm. to me is like you andy could, times is going to be yeah, under major threat you could make the argument that this island in Croatia is a nicer place than North Aurora in Seattle, where I live. It has you can make that argument. People have made that argument. I've seen, by the way, I've seen photos of where you're going to be staying, and it looks really cool. Like paradise, kind of, right? Yeah, like so paradise. Like I'm saying, if you want to switch places i'll go right <laughs> and you host live wire september 12th featuring pink martini yes if if nick jarin can co-host with me um i uh so anyway yeah so i i don't want to i'm not trying to be a bummer about it i'm kind of like mm -hmm. oh that's what this is what this trip is like those are a bunch of things that i don't do well with oh i was i brought up north aurora because i was kind of like well obviously where i'm going is going to be beautiful in paradise but the thing that's most important to me in all things in life is like the ability to be on my own pace be on my own own mm -hmm. clothes you know like whatever and i'm sure yeah. you know we'll have our own room in this place but like not negotiating meals or worrying about just not worrying about other people and, and just like kind of but here i'm going to be in a place where i don't speak the language on this island that sounds like it's pretty you know far away from you know like kind of like a lot of anything urban and everybody's gonna be hanging out at the pool all day so i'm a little bit confused as to exactly how i'm going to be spending my time but i will tell you this i am so, so, so happy that my health has made a turn for the better yes. in the past week or so, because on top of all the anxiety I just shared with you, imagine me when I was barely getting around and I was like, I'm going to yeah. be on a flight for 10 hours. And, th and that's why I was very concerned about getting these like comfortable shoes. And I got a couple of pairs of like shoes that I feel I'm going to be comfortable in. But also my uh, rheumatoid arthritis is apparently starting to subside, at least that initial flare up I had. Um, and I'm very excited about that because I'm in such a better. And also I was talking to Veeves about this. I don't think I quite realized how bad my mental state had gotten mm -hmm. kind of over the course of the summer as well like it just one thing led to another like just the the inability to do simple tasks and things that I like doing in the summer like caring for the yard and, and stuff like that I would just spend a big chunk of the summer just like icing my <laughs> ankles yeah. you know what I mean and so I am very very excited to say that I am feeling like okay I have these comfy shoes now I'm going to get off that plane I'm sure I'll be a little bit cramped but hopefully like anybody would be and I, I can get around more and also even if everybody's having like you know a bunch of pool days hopefully I can take my camera and just sort of go on my own little somehow go on my own little adventures and I, I really mm -hmm. want to take a lot of photos and also um, you know kind of read my book and stuff and, and, and enjoy it but I, I will say I'm already sort of looking forward to being in control of my own life again when I get back I think you're going to end up having a really fun time because I have three words for you Chavapi. Have you talked about this at all? No. Chivapi. It is like the go-to food, street food in Croatia, and it's just basically a delicious sausage. Oh, they're little hamburger like a, sausages, right? Isn't yeah, it ground it's meat? It's called chavapi. Uh, yes, yes, and, yes. I, Anita made some like, of those recently. So good. Dude, you are just going to be living on chavapi while you're yes. there. Gonna, you're going to love that. You're yeah. going to absolutely love it. And then I'm going to go swimming right after that. So it's, it's a very sausage-based society, so I think you're going to fit right in. It really is. I will, because I do have, like, you know, my... my you got Eastern European I have churches. a lot of... Exactly. I have Eastern European roots, so I do... The, the food definitely, I think, will be up my alley. But I, in all seriousness, or... 
as I sort of like kind of balance this idea of, wow, you know, I'm going to be in a house for a seven day pool party, which is, again, not (laughs) my speed. Um, I am very excited about seeing a part of the world that I would otherwise never see. And just like that. This is such a bad example, but or, or parallel. But remember how I told you uh, somewhat recently on the show that when I went down to Los Angeles to apply for a job that I wasn't sure that I was going to take. In fact, I was thinking I wouldn't take it. But then I just sort of like the moment I landed in Los Angeles and looked around, I was like, I'm going to take this job just because mm. I've never lived in a place like this before. Whether it was the for your consideration you know, Emmys, yeah. billboards or whatever it is. I was just like, oh, there's a culture here. Obviously, it's Los Angeles. People have heard of it. But like I was just sort of like immediately taken by, oh, I'm in this place that like feels very different. And so yeah. there's an excitement about that, like a buzz mm-hmm. that I get that I'm kind of both nervous but excited to like land, even in Amsterdam yeah. and just be like, I'm in Amsterdam. You know, I mean, I've so never high, been that dude. far. Oh, dude, in the airport. I heard they have like just spliff. Hash, just... They call them spliff lockers. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, and then uh, I'm going to leave the spliff locker and head over. And especially Croatia, it just seems like such a unique place to be. So I am I am excited about that. I think you're going to have that. a fun time. And I am so glad that you're feeling better because that was the mm-hmm. thing I was stressed for you about is it's already kind of pushing your comfort zone, and then you throw in the kind of lack of mobility. Yeah, that would have been like that would have been really bad. So I'm I'm really glad you're feeling better, and yep. um, I'm going to try to hold the fort down here. You did such okay. a good job, Andrew, and I've been thinking about this a lot. You really screwed me, dude, by doing such a good job of handling the show. I mean, while we I got was one text from one famous. No, listener but I've who looked said, at the shows and seen who you talked to, and you had ideas. You produced these things up. You didn't. Like I was just like I don't know, I'm gonna call my mom or something. Like you really, you really people put on your will love hat. that. People will love having you your put mom on, on your producer show. hat. I'm gonna try to hold it down here for the next week, and um, you know, have on uh, a, a variety of special guests and mm-hmm. people to help me keep the needle moving. Um, but uh, but but relax, enjoy Croatia. Don't even think about the show, but also mm-hmm. leave your phone on because if John and I don't know how to post the show, we will call you. I am literally probably going to be trying to um, book rental equipment for Philadelphia while I'm in. Oh, Cro- don't do that. Uh, well, I think we got to get that done. <laughs> Are you from Croatia? You're going to be trying. Well, to do that? I I mean, when I get back from Croatia, there's a pretty small. Is it one week? I think it was just like one week turnover between me getting back from Croatia before. I getting... think it's I think it's a couple because I is think we it? wanted to make it one week and you kiboshed that because uh, it was going to be too close. It is close. Yeah, the 28th, it will be eighth TBTL Philly. Yeah, the 28th. Okay. There's still tickets available. Yeah, Come that's hang right. out with us Saturday right. night. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, I can probably take care of that rental stuff. Anyway, I have, actually have stuff I need to talk to you about regarding that, but now is not the place. But um, yeah, yeah, so I, I will say this, and this is, and I'm looking forward to Philadelphia as well. Like, we haven't done a live show in a really, well, actually, I guess it's been just over a year since we did our 4,000th show, but it feels like a very long time since we've done a live show, certainly on the road somewhere because we did the 4,000th here in Seattle. And uh, I'm just excited. I also just love Philadelphia, so I'm excited about that. But my God, am I looking forward to October. I feel like this summer, (laughs) I I told you this, and I don't want to make too too much of this uh, or too much of a pity party, but this was a, it was like the beginning of the summer was really tough for me, obviously, for for Mm health-related reasons. And I just started to feel like it it was sort of like kind of... uh, it was sort of like lost time, sort of, and then, um, and now I'm feeling better and I'm feeling great. But I'm looking forward to like kind of having, kind of going back to not having anything big on the calendar for at least mm-hmm. a little bit. And I think once I get to October, sweater nothing season. Huge. Oh God, yes. Get that, co- get that, co- get the, get the bone collector going again. Some That's cozy right. stock. It's football season. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna miss everything's um, coming up, Andy. I am gonna miss the, I guess, opening. I, am I gonna be in the, in the sky for? the first Thursday night football game. I don't get to see most of the Sunday games anymore because of my schedule, but I do enjoy, since I already pay for Amazon Prime anyway, I'm like, oh, I can, I do enjoy that first Thursday night football game of the season. I guess I'll be missing that. I think I'm going to be, I might, am I going to lose all of Thursday because I'm leaving on Wednesday and I think by the time I land, it's Friday already. I don't local know. Time, it's right? Confusing. It is. Um, just try to push through. That's the, what I learned. Just try to like, when you, when mm-hmm. you land, try Try to not try to go to sleep at what your normal time would be. And That's see interesting. Yeah, that puts you on the right road. So, yep. well, listen, you have fun, and again, thank you so much for taking care of everything while I was out of town, and I will. Uh, do my best for there to still be a TBTL when you come back. Okay, okay. it would be nice to come back to a job. I'd love to. I'd yeah. love to still be employed when I get back, if possible. Okay, good. That's good. All right, all of you. Thank you for listening. 
Uh, we're going to be back here on Monday with more Imaginary Radio. Uncle Funtime Luke's will be in charge of things. Mm, oh, so my God. The show will probably eating, post at about 7 p.m. Everybody's going to be eating <laughs> TV dinners and playing yep. with old ashtrays. That's right. Exactly. I'll let you have a sip of my beer next week, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Safe travels, Andrew. Please remember, no mountain too tall. And good luck to all and me. Power out.